Hello, this is a video about ray marching in Blender's node editor. This is just the first part and here we aren't actually going to use Blender's node editor which is going to be talking about what we want to do and what we need to calculate to achieve ray marching in Blender's node, march, uh, node editor and what ray marching is. So this is just an introduction. If you don't need this, you already know what ray marching is, you can just skip this video. Okay, so let's go here. So this is just an introduction to ray marching. And this basically illustrates, well, not really, but sort of shows what ray marching is. It's just another rendering technique. So right here, this is our camera. And you have ray tracing where you draw, where you cast rays and then you bounce them and you look if maybe eventually they hit a light source or you do it the other way around you go from the light source and then bounce and see if it hits um, the camera which in this case it doesn't so that's ray tracing which is what the cycles does you also have rasterizing which basically checks at every pixel which part of the scene is in that pixel and then you can also do some bounces and stuff which is what you see used in um, video games but ray tracing is the most realistic and then there's the last thing or there, there are other techniques but the third most common one is ray marching and here you're going to go through every pixel on your camera or well, your image and then cast the ray from like the center of the camera to that thing and then keep marching forward till you going forward till you hit an object then based on the distance to that object and other things you can calculate lighting and reflections but the important thing is that you march forward to the ray and that's how you determine whether you actually hit an object or not and you also know the distance to that object at that point so for example right here let me use the line tool so right there so you go forward along this ray in tiny steps till you hit it and then you know that the object is there but there's a problem with this because you have to go in very small steps Otherwise, if you go in steps that are too big and you might be here, then next you might be here and you might have missed the object. So this causes a problem and we can fix this by drawing circles, which might sound weird, but <laughs> the thing you do is you start at the camera and then you need some sort of function which is referred to as an SDF which is sine distance function or sometimes also called DE which stands for distance estimator depending on if it's exact or not so what this gives you is at every point so for example here it tells you the distance the distance to the nearest point of an object in the scene to that point. So for example here, probably right around here is the closest point. So there, that means that there's no object closer than this distance. And if you're inside the object, then this distance won't really be a distance because it will be a um, negative. So I can actually show something like that. Made this small program. So right here, you can see as I move my mouse around, the circle grows bigger, but it's never, as I get closer here, the circle grows smaller. And this represents the farthest I can go until I hit an object. And I can show the object now, which is just this sphere, or in two dimensions, just a circle. So 
as you can see everywhere that my mouse is the circle will always be touching the object which is, in this case is a circle so maybe a more interesting one would be to do a rectangle sorry so now it's a rectangle as you can see and again it's the same thing so imagine that there's a camera here then as I'm marching and I know that I can and I want to go in this direction then I know that I can go all the way up to this point and then all the way up to that point and then all the way up to that point and now I'm going off to infinity and at some point at some threshold I say okay I didn't hit an object so this is how this works in two dimensions and then in three dimensions instead of a circle it's going to be a sphere and so you can imagine that there's this ray here or right here now I can go here and now I draw another sphere something like that so I now I continue and I can go here and eventually turns out I go to infinity and I didn't hit the object so in blender one important thing we also need to think about is so the camera is already set up for us and what we need to march forward along the ray is these lines which represent the ray going from the camera to that point to that shading point or and we can get the oh sorry what we there's a um, in the texture coordinates i think so uh, no under geometry there's this in or uh, output called incoming and what that gives you is the vector which points the normalized vector so it has length 1 which points from the shading point to the camera and that way if we just do minus that then it will point the other direction and it will be from the camera to the shading point and then we can march forward along that ray till we hit our plane in this case and the important thing to realize is that this plane represents our scene boundaries so anything outside won't be important and the actual objects will be inside this plane so we'll maybe draw a sphere inside this plane and it's not going to be um, that we're not going to try to render this plane this is just the bounding box for our actual scene itself so this could just as well have been um, Suzanne or something and then our sphere would also be at the same place it's just that this we would use Suzanne as the bounding box so not a box anymore so yeah that's ray marching